Hey, how is it going? Taking a look, and really this is an addition to the uh, Volca sample tutorial I did before, but we're going to take a look at Pagin's, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, his new uh, firmware he just released. I have Beta 6 installed here, Beta 7 is out now, but uh, there wasn't too much difference between the two, so I'm just riding with Beta 6 for now. Um, what I want to show you is in depth how it works. Um, if you'd rather read a PDF, I'll link one below. I found one that's pretty good. Um, I'll also link uh, a video that gives you the cliff notes if you don't want to sit through a long video showing you what it does. That's what convinced me to upgrade in the first place, that video. And yeah, we'll, we'll get into it here. Um, if you don't know the vocal sample at all, uh, pardon me at all, you probably want to check out a different tutorial. Uh, I have my own that I'm biased towards, but there's there's a lot of good ones out there. Uh, but let's get into uh, Pagin's new firmware. And really, first thing you want to do once it's installed, if you haven't done so already, hold down the function button while you turn this sucker on, and you're going to look at your global settings. Turn 9 and 10 on, and what that allows you to do is... Uh, depending on what part is set on the sample, you can play that MIDI channel to play the part, and you can play it chromatically. And with 10, I will show you is if you go into MIDI channel 11, uh, you can play parts 1 to 10 on demand on the keyboard. Um, not as cool as, as the other thing, but uh, no harm in turning it on. Uh, the written documentation will go into those uh, global channels more in depth. So when you do that, hit record, and that will save them uh, to the device. So I am going to go load up uh, pattern 10. Why pattern 10 is because I set a couple samples for this tutorial already. And part one is going to be a kick drum. So if I hit it here, you know, just a basic kick drum. But if I play it on the keyboard, if I set it to MIDI channel 1 by holding down shift and 1 up here on the key step, your MIDI controller might be a little different. I can now play the kick drum on the keyboard with different pitches. And it has velocity. So let's go ahead and pick a drum to record here. And I've already done the let me clear it. a little high so if I want to drop that I can drop the octave over here and change it. Turn off record so it doesn't do an extra note. And I got a basic kick drum. So that alone is very cool. So by changing between MIDI channel 1 to 10 I can play all those parts with the keyboard and I don't have to goof around with the knobs anymore to you know you know change how it sounds like I can do all that right on a MIDI controller. Uh, amazing. <laughs> That worth is worth it alone to upgrade in my mind. But let's take a look at some of the other things we can do. So we have this basic, you know, kick drum going on. What is the next kind of step that you can do? Well, most of the depth of this uh, custom firmware comes from this new sample menu. And in order to access it, you have to hold down the function key and twist the sample knob. Now I'll get back to this ONN one in a second. But what is really easy and what can be done right after install is this probability setting. So right now it's set to 90%. So if I set it to 100%, basically, let me get out of here. If I go to the step mode, on each of these red lights is when that, when that sound is going to trigger in the sequencer. But if I change the probability of that, so I hold down function, go into this sample menu, keep twisting it till I hit probability, let go of function, I can change that 100% probability down to 1%. So now there's only a 1% chance that sound's going to trigger on, on one of those parts. Uh, in the, for a kind of a kick drum, not too handy. But hey, you might want to drop it down to 95. And what's that going to do? That means every time, let's go ahead. Every time there's one of these pips, there's a 95% chance it's going to trigger, which is going to be the majority of them. But even that 5% variation is going to mix up uh, the loop a little bit, which is nice when you only have a 16 bar part uh, uh, bar sample, or pardon me, sequencer. It's going to let you make some loops that aren't going to sound so repetitive just using that probability. So let's hear for a sec. So you just skip that one. So right now it's not too effective, but when you have all these samples on top of it, just having that variation in the drum loop is going to 
break up the uh, the sequencer a bit so it doesn't get so damn repetitive. Now, what I want to show you next, let's get out of this demo mode, is from part two to five is the exact same sample sound, right? So what I can do now, and I will just ignore that for a sec because I'm going to show you this ONN one and right now it's off. So in order to access this feature, you need to change your MIDI controller. I think it's from 12 to 16. I always just go with 16 because it's the last channel on my uh, controller and I know that's gonna get me in this part. So right now it's off, so nothing, right? So let's go ahead and change it to select. And what it does is the pen. So I can, what this does is I don't have to surf between channels one to 10 in the select mode. If I wanna play a part with the keyboard, I can just navigate it to it on the, on the Volca down here, you know, go to part five, same sound, part six. So you can go to the different parts and play them. It's just a quick way to uh, to surf between the different sounds. Now let's go back to two here. So that is off and then select lets you navigate between the different parts and play them on the keyboard without having to surf through the MIDI channels. Sample, uh, it quite means you can play samples one to 100. I only have 50 installed on here now, depending where you are on the keyboard. So right now I'm right in the middle. It's just going to go through all the samples I have on the device. So it's a quick way to, to play all your samples. I haven't found much use for it personally, but instead of having to navigate through here, you can use part 16 to surf through all your various different samples. Uh, maybe you'll find a creative use for it. I haven't, but hey, cool enough. I'm not bitching at all. All right, pattern. So what does pattern do? Let's go ahead and head out of here and let's hold down memory. And because right now we have part 16 set to pattern. So if I push play, it's gonna play this silly little pattern we got right now. But now let's just take a look because we're in pattern 10. If I push a different note, let's try seven. So if I go eight, it's, it's gonna play pattern one. If I go Nine. It's not even nine. It's a note on the keyboard. It's a quick way to shuffle between your various patterns and play them on the keyboard instead of having to hold that memory in time, right? Use the keyboard. Switch between all my patterns. to the next key, it's going to go back to pattern one, and it's going to just keep on going, depending where I'm on the keyboard. All right, let's go back to our pattern 10. Stop that nonsense. All right, so where were we here? We were in ONN1, and we had shown off, shown you select, showed you sample, and pattern. Next, we're going to get into the poly mode, which is very, very cool. So what, what it does is... Right now I'm on slot two. So poly two will let me play slot two and three uh, with the same, uh, if I push two keys, let's get something a little better sounding. You can play a little chord between pattern two and three there. And if I do three, I can do three notes at the same time. Four, you get it. And what's really cool is if you set this poly up, and right now it's going to play note two, three, four, and five, because I set that. Let's go ahead and hit play and record. I can enable the ARP on the key step here, and I can do a kind of cool little thing. So that's one. So let's, let's clear that for now. Not exactly what I want to do. We'll give it one second. See, and I gotta clear part two, three, and four because that's recorded all those parts at the same time. Oh, forgot to clear.
clear part two. Let's get that cleared. Sorry about that. What I want to do before I record is on the key step, set up a chord. Hold down shift and hold. And there's velocity enabled on this too. So if I push the key really lightly, you can hardly hear it. If I push it hard, there you go. So let's go ahead. Let's try that again and not make a dumb mistake this time. Just set up a random chord arp. It's going to sound like crap to begin with. Give me a second. So there you go, right? Now, what I'm going to get into is what I found the most. Let me shut this off. Is the most confusing part of this custom firmware, but is really one of the most powerful parts of it. Is and I didn't get this through the quick video or really reading the documentation until I played of it myself. You may have to do the same thing. But if I hold down function, go down the sample here, and let's go into bar filter. Now, let me just push play. And you can't see it very well. But there's gonna be a flashing light down here. Now, just like song mode. If you don't know what song mode is, uh, check out my tutorial. It will show you all that crap. But if uh, song mode, it will cycle between all the parts. So you've taken this one, you know, sequencer part, part ten, and now you can see how the light is going through all this bar zero zero means on each of these parts now. Fingers, this is going to cycle between well, one to sixteen here. Now, if I change from bar zero 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 using this to part one. Ain't gonna play on the lights that are off, so I can take all four parts of this chord and set them to play on different bars, and it's gonna make a really cool musical effect. And you can, you can play around with that till it sounds how you like. So now you can see it's gonna all the chord isn't going off at once. So the bar filter lets you take that one, basically 16 steps that are going over and over and over and over again on the sequencer. And it lets you split it up into a much longer sequence and allows for a lot more variation than the initial sequencer gave you. It's super powerful and really makes this silly little, uh, I shouldn't say silly, because even without the, the firmware, it is quite, I quite found a lot of value out of it, but it's, it's this new firmware really takes it to a brand new level of what it actually can do. And the bar filter, I, I feel, is one of the, the real uh, powerful uh, additions. All right, so if that isn't enough for you, let me show you some more functionality this guy now has. Um, so I'm in part seven now, just kind of a basic note. So let's go into our fancy sample menu, menu, pardon me. We've covered all these guys. We've covered the probability. We've covered the bar filter. Now the no filter. So untouched, what this means is T for trigger, N for note, V for velocity. If they're all on, you get pretty much basic functionality. Let me turn off T for trigger. Well, touch anything, nothing happens. We're going, what the hell is that useful for, Nick? Well, let's go exit this menu for a second. Let's go in to our, our loop here. And I'm just going to mute that um, melody we set up earlier quick. So mute parts two, three, four, five. So we just have our kick drum. And now let's just lay down every single note in the stick for this guy. So. I can't trigger a note, but I can change the velocity if I touch really lightly. Or make it really loud if I hit it hard. And I can change the note. Now, so that's handy, is if you don't have every single step triggered, but if you have something laid down that you really like, and you want to change uh, the velocity or the note and not add notes in if you haven't record, not that I do right now, or add an initial note in. So let's go back to the menu here, to the note filter, and let's re-enable it all. So if I, so we trigger on, I'm going to 
be adding notes when I change the velocity and note. But if I turn the trigger off, I can change a loop I already have in there and not add notes when I try to change it. Now if I change note to be off, I'm not going to change the sound of it, but I can change the velocity still. And you get it if I turn, whoops, don't touch that. Now velocity is off, which is handy maybe when I'm doing this demo and you don't want to hear me mash on the keyboard that makes sounds. I'm hitting it hard, but it's not changing the velocity. Whereas if I change the velocity back on, hit it hard. Now I turn it off and hit it so light. No difference. But I can change the note and I can trigger it. So trigger, note, velocity, and you can keep twisting this dial till you get the part set up however you like. So let's go ahead and clear that part now. Change it back to normal. Okay. So that is the note filter. What else do we got? We're almost done. We have reverb type. Now, initially, uh, this I have you know this page in somehow you know the work he did is amazing. He basically I think he took what he could find about the he he put some hints how he did it, but he basically from what I can see he kind of he kind of took the update packages that Korg did, listened to the sound, and kind of reverse engineered how it worked. It's pretty fucking amazing stuff. Uh, anyways. He somehow figured out that the sample was shipped with, you know, three different reverb types. So there's reverb zero, and there are now one and two. So you can select between all these reverb types. So let's go ahead back here, and let's find me a, a longer sound. Let's see what's under eight. All right, nine. Okay, let's go nine, and let's hold down function reverb, and, uh, and let's turn on reverb for part nine. Let's crank that sucker. So you can hear that. That's reverb. Oh, shoot. Okay, good. I didn't change the sample. So that was reverb what? Zero was reverb one. Doesn't sound too different. But let's see what we can do. Set it to reverb one. Let's lay down a bunch of steps. We won't max it out either. So that's reverb one on 90. So let's go ahead and try to re change the reverb again, see if it sounds any different. Reverb two. Let's try to change it up again. And reverb changes are done universal. So you now have three different reverb types to work with. I maybe it doesn't work great with this part, but I have trouble actually with my ears hearing much of a difference. But yeah, let's try a different change in the sample too. There's a little bit hint of a difference. hard to hear to be honest with you but hey maybe it works better with different parts but that's what that reverb sound is you can change universally not per part how the reverb sounds clear that part <laughs> okay <laughs> all right let's stop that what is going on here all right so crappy demonstration of the reverb but trust me i heard it the other night it sounded a little bit different i'm not hearing it tonight but there is now three different reverb types your mileage uh, may vary uh drone what does drone do it is quite simple uh it's either off or on zero for false uh one and what this does is uh if it's set to zero har 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 matey find something a bit better uh there we go so let's just drop this one note here So, nothing too great, but if I put on loop and I push this, see it fades out. 
Now, if I turn on sample and go to drone, turn it to true, uh, it's a little hack that if you push the de uh, decay to maximum and have a loop, it's never going to dull down. So you heard it'll fade out before, it ain't going to fade out anymore. So if you want a drone note, it's one way to do, and especially if you... play around a bit and I you know I haven't done anything different and when I get sick of it I can just turn the loop off and hit it so it's just a quick little hack that you don't have to select the part crank the decay and then turn the loop on it might be easier you just hey I'm planning on using these as drone notes set in the drone and they'll end continuously anyways I think that's enough I don't want to get too in depth um, if you guys have any questions or uh, want me to show you anything else, uh, with Move 7, I don't think there's much of a difference. I think there's a way to copy uh, parts easily so you don't have to, you know, goof around on them so much with, a, with the interface. You can just quickly copy parts across. But I'll put the documentation below for Part 7. If you haven't upgraded yet, you might as well grab 7. There's no difference between 6. Um, yeah, there's videos below for other videos you might find or more handy install guides my initial uh, Sample tutorial if you have no clue how this works. Anyways, hope you find that useful. Uh, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Thanks